Right, Kai, and it's a huge amount of money. As you mentioned, there are millions of dollars that the city has won in the settlement so far, and they are saying those millions, some of them are set to go to certain organizations that serve the Baltimore community, Baltimore City. I spoke with some of those organizations tonight, and they tell me that this money, these funds, will simply just help them expand their work. A formerly incarcerated convicted felon, now a scientist, endocrinologist, and assistant professor serving the Baltimore community. Dr. Stan Andres, one of many to receive a big call from the city. I mean, he's like, have you checked the news yet? And I was like, no, no. And he's like, Baltimore City is giving you a million dollars. That call coming from city council, that money coming from the city's recent opioid settlements. About 65% of formerly incarcerated people have some type of substance use issue. And going toward his seven-year-old program, Prison Cells to PhD, which works with former and current incarcerated people in Baltimore City. Dr. Stan says participants go through a one-year plan that sets them up to have a career using education to get there. We have about a 90% success rate of getting our scholars into school and jobs. And P2P is just one of more than a dozen programs receiving some of the $42 million the city has allocated specifically for organizations tackling substance use disorder. The Maryland Safe Haven is set to receive $3 million. What we plan to use the money on is to continuously expand our services, right? So the, the, that involves folks who are impacted and folks who were impacted. The Maryland Safe Haven works to house and help those in need, especially those within the LGBTQIA community. We believe that housing is health care. So we, we uh, enter, the, enter everything with a housing first mindset. Organizations continuing their work with an added bonus, hoping to help those whose shoes they've also been in. All of us, or most of us, have went through similar walks and journeys, and we were able to come through on the other side. But for, for us, what it means is just, you know, continuing the work that we've been doing. And Dr. Sand there tells me that they are looking to possibly open up a women's transitional house. They're still, though, in the talks of what they'll do with the money they receive. As for the city, they still have pending lawsuits. The next one is set to go to trial September 16th. Live tonight outside of City Hall, Tori Yorkie, WBAL-TV 11 News.